Father in heaven, be with us throughout this midday power surge is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, salutations to Safe to Serve International and first time viewers. Welcome to this midday power surge. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. I'm your host, Andrew Henriquez, on this Friday, December 1st. Welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. Solemn times we're living in. And today I simply want to remind you of things the Bible has said would transpire and those things are transpiring. In the bosom, the heart of God's Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, we find the fourth commandment with one word that begins. It says, uh, remember. Why remember? Because many times we tend to forget. And by forgetting, we make wrong decisions in a time of crisis. Let's get right into this. Those in the EU, Jamaicans, Africans, and people elsewhere are being enslaved. And today we want to give solutions to said people how they can get out of slavery and remain and become and remain a free people in Jesus Christ. If you understand the end goal, you can better comprehend the current events because they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. That thing called digital ID, it is devilish. It is tyrannical. And blood is on their shoulders. Blood is on their hands. And I'm going to be addressing a particular SDA leader. And I'm going to be very candid. Blood is on his hands. Let's get right into this. The purpose of Christ is to make us free. We know that. John chapter 8, verse 36, Romans 6, verse 18, free from sin. Revelation 18 and verse 4, free from Babylon. And the truth will make us free. John 8, verse 32 and verse 36. But what is Satan's plan? Satan's plan is to enslave. Is to enslave. To make us slaves, prisoners. That is Satan's plan. To make us worse than animals. That is Satan's plan. Well, my friends, with that in mind, we are told Popery has been the backbone of the slave trade. And why do we talk about this? Because individuals cannot connect the dots. They cannot see clearly who is the great puppet master. Revelation 18, Babylon enslaving the world, enslaving the masses. What are the tools of the new world, the new world order? Notice. See, I think if, if you think what are the tools of the new world, everybody should have a digital ID, mm -hmm. everybody should have a bank account, everybody should have a smartphone. Okay. Then anything can be done. Everything else is built on that. Because we were talking about this. Yeah. Did he mention a digital ID, a part of the new world, the new world order? Well, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, Jeez, take I a look at this right here. This is the Pope talking about a new world order, a new economic order. And remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. And they're in the EU, European Union. What are they about to launch? The UN as well. 50 nations going completely digital. In five years, by the year 2028, focus on the digital ID. Focus on digital payments, CBDC, smartphones. I'm going to be addressing all of the above, but focus now on the digital ID. And this system is architect, it, it is instigated by Popery. It's right there, friends. He called for the World Bank, the IMF, to launch what is called DPI, 
a digital only infrastructure. And notice, he barked and they responded. And now we have it. The global digital ID linked to individuals' bank accounts. Agenda 2030 and go number one, digital IDs. CBDC, it's tyrannical. Look at this now, friends. How many years? Seven years of acceleration. The pace, they're moving rapidly. It's the papal agenda. So why not flee also from Sunday worship? Because Sunday worship came from popery, paganism, nature worship. It goes right back to Satan. Listen again, digital ID. See, I think if, if you think what are the tools of the new world, everybody should have a digital ID, everybody should have a bank account, everybody should have a smartphone. Okay. Notice here, friends, fresh off the press. Now we begin in Africa, November 25th, Uganda. Telecom regulator disconnects 1.4 million SIM cards. How are their cell phones going to work? It, link, it is linked to biometrics. If you don't give up your biometrics to the government, they will shut down your phone. But remember they told us, your phone is necessary for travel, for banking, for transactions, even for your identification. And now, if you don't give up your biometrics, if you don't go along with their draconian policies, they will shut down, cut off your cell phone access. Tyrannical. Get everybody on a digital-only society. And if they don't go along with the agenda, cut them off from society. Notice here, friends, it's linked to the digital ID. Take a listen. Uganda, speak. Not all customers are affected. There are those that have registered their national, their SIM cards with their national ID over the years, since 2018. But those that you initially sent their NIN via SMS and USSD, we don't have their biometric details, we are not matched against the regional ID. Right? So we are going through the process for those particular customers. There is no other... Right? No, wrong. That's slavery. Give up your biometrics and make sure your phone is linked to the digital ID. You see, friends, individuals need to understand this. What you're now seeing, they are telling us that that digital ID will be embedded under your skin, in your body. What are you going to do then? Look at the various aspects of society. Without the digital ID, you won't be able to access these things. Look at number 10 on that wheel. It's telecommunications. Without the digital ID, you won't have access to telecommunications. It's right there, World Economic Forum. Look what this says. Biometric SIM. Registration is taking root in many countries, especially in Africa, with governments arguing the move is necessary in fighting crime. Oh, yes, they had to say that. The boogeyman. So to combat fighting crime, we will make you a slave, a government pauper who wants to be a slave and still be happy. That's what they said. Welcome to 2030. You owe nothing. You become a government pauper and you will be happy. Continue. It goes on to state, some countries are pushing back. Listen to this. Red words. Early this year, Ghana. So from Uganda, now to Ghana. Ordered telecommunication companies to suspend over 8 million SIM cards that were not linked to users' biometrics, and the digital ID. Uganda, Ghana, now it's Nigeria. It's right there, friends. 
And look at the headline. The minister in Nigeria stated that they are launching the digital ID registry and it will be completed by 2025. Nigerian banks given deadline to close all individual bank accounts not linked to what, everybody? The digital ID. Listen. Central Bank of Nigeria is directing all deposit money banks and other financial institutions in the country to close accounts without BVNs within the next 30-day timeline. Data from the Nigerian Interbank said... And notice, the BVN is the digital ID. The time Central in Bank which we're living in, in Nigeria, now your cell phone will be blocked without the digital ID. The same ID they're seeing in the near future will be embedded under your skin. After hearing this, the natural person, it feels scary. They're now, they're now trepid. They're fearful. How can we escape this coming slavery? Coming? This present slavery. This movement, it is ubiquitous across the board. It has gone global. It's a pandemic movement. How you stay tuned? There it is. For Nigeria blocks not 1 million plus, not 8 million, but 73 million mobile phones. Red words. If you're not connected to the digital ID, Agenda 2030, do you see how fast they're moving? Nigerian states the ban those who did not receive the pestilence 19 inoculation from banking as well as places of worship. Some people thought this would never take place, but now we are seeing it. Now we are seeing it. Take a listen. Um, I think it's very hard for people who've grown up and enjoyed Western liberty and, and human liberty to imagine literally that we're going into a system where literally our homes, our cars, our communities become digital concentration camps. Last days we're living in, not only in Ghana, Uganda, Nigeria, but also in the Bahamas, as well as in Jamaica, slavery. And such people should be even hypersensitive. We should be able to smell the rat because we have been a people enslaved. Why is it we cannot smell the rat and smell something fishy? What is fishy? The octopus's tentacles. Why? We're too busy with TikTok, the nonsense on Instagram, etc., instead of using the platforms for evangelism. We're too busy with the cares of this life, believing the government officials really mean us good. They don't mean us good. They have sold out their souls for money. They have betrayed their own people. They are traitors. I'm going to prove that to you. Come back here. There it is. Bahamas, Jamaica, Nigeria, what's happening in Jamaica? The digital-only society is on foot. Digital ID, speak for yourself. Listen. In the coming weeks I will be, and days, I'll be making certain announcements regarding the acceleration of Jamaica's intention to become a fully digital society. We are well on our way to this. We have established the national identification system. We have put in place our digital currency. Mm. We have given directions it's to clear. our ministries. And first, they, are, they are applauding. In other words, let us have a round of applause. We are slaves again. All they did, the Pope, his human agents, the merchants, they simply removed the handcuffs, the shackles, the chains, the ropes, and put these things back on in a digital format. If we understand the end goal, so we covered Uganda, we covered 
Nigeria, we covered Bahamas, Jamaica. Now, let's talk about Kenya. We covered Ghana, headline, fresh off the press, Kenya, health care. The president in Kenya has now launched universal health care bill, requiring all Kenyans to contribute 2.75% of their salaries towards a new health fund. Every Kenyan must register as a member of what is called SHIF, Social Health Insurance Fund, SHIF. And now you're going to see those people in Kenya who do not have the SHIF will not be able to buy and sell. You can't buy or sell without shift. And people are wondering, where is this agenda coming from? Look at this. Agenda 2030. Look at goal number three. It's about health. What made them slaves in the process? Here it is, friends. Those who fail to enroll would be denied services in Kenya. What services? If I read this, you might... If I read this paragraph, you might begin to laugh. Let me try. If you don't pay the Social Health Insurance Fund shift, the government says, we will not want you to marry since your spouse might give you stress, that you might get sick. We will not want you to drive since you might be involved in an accident and get hurt and yet you haven't paid to get treated support the shift if you get married your spouse make you sick pay up front so we can take care of you what is this my friends are they playing with people's salvation and people's well-being look at this Kenyans will be mandated to enter the new health insurance scheme. Now watch this. What services will you be barred from? Notice, next sentence. You'll be barred from accessing government services such as student loans from the Higher Education Loans Board. Barred from government jobs. Barred from motor vehicle registration services what so without a digital id and the shift you can drive a vehicle how are we going to escape this tyranny stay tuned without these things you cannot have a married license you cannot get married without it you cannot attend school and receive loans I'm not supporting getting government loans for schooling. Get back here. It says, my watch carefully. It says, what else are we going to be barred from? The acquisition of tax compliance certificates. Amen. That's what they say. Among others, it goes on. You'll be barred from passport, receiving a passport or renewing your passport, and travel document acquisition. You can't register your business. You can't procure goods and services. Those who miss out on the registration will also miss out on purchasing and selling properties. You can buy, you can sell. Without shift, all in the name of health. It's Agenda 2030. The UN the WEF, and the Pope of Rome. And the Kenyan president is connected to the World Economic Forum. There he is. Now watch what Klaus Schwab said. He has infiltrated various governments and the presidents and prime ministers are actually doing the bidding of the World Economic Forum. And by extension, the bidding, the bidding of the Pope of Rome. Release that. When I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin and so on, 
they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Pres of uh, Argentina and so on, that we penetrate the cabinets. Mm. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau and I will know that... Enough. They control the cabinets. And that's why he said the future is being built by us. Let's also be clear. Yes. The future is not just happening. The future is built by us. Yeah. So these things are not coincidental. The very same words of the Pope understand who the master of the universe on earth really is. Flee Sunday worship. Flee false worship. Get ready to become a free person and remain free in Christ. In true worship. Seventh day Sabbath keeping worship. All right, friends, listen to this. This is uh, the leader from Kenya. What is he launching? The digital ID. Iris scan. Finger palm scanning. Biometrics. I have been assured by all the stakeholders, led by the ministries concerned, that by December, we will be able to launch digital ID, where every Kenyan don't have to carry any paper, plastic or otherwise, as an ID that they should be able to be identified digitally using their iris or their fingerprints, and we can transact without the necessity of people struggling to identify who they are. And friends, without it, they're telling us you won't be able to access government services, bank accounts, and traveling. So how are we to prepare? Stay tuned. How are we to prepare? The WEF stated the ID, digital ID, will suppress and trample underfoot privacy, suppress your freedom of movement, trample upon your rights. Slavery. And who is the backbone of slavery? Oh, friends, you see that. You see what time we're living in. However, there was a setback in Kenya. Listen. Tonight, the government has suffered a setback in its health case plan after the High Court suspended the implementation of this social health insurance scheme. So, the Kenya so why was it suspended? Why? Listen, I'm going to play the hypocrisy. Why was it suspended? Oh, the president and the cabinet members of parliament in Kenya did not at first speak to the, sh the, the, the stakeholders. The stakeholders. As a result, we are going to suspend the shift. Listen. KMPDU has argued that the government has gone ahead with the implementation of the Social Health Insurance Act without engaging stakeholders to resolve their contentious issues. So what was the issue? The government did not involve and communicate with the stakeholders. That is on the shift, the health side. But what about the digital ID? Watch this. They were caught red-handed. Release that. I have been assured by all the stakeholders hmm. and by the ministries concerned that by December, we will be able to launch digital ID where every Kenyan don't have to come. So for the ID, he spoke with the stakeholders and they gave him the stamp of approval. You see the hypocrisy. Move on. Listen. Doctors Union took issue because now they're going to say we must suspend the shift because it is going to disenfranchise Kenyans, cut them off from government services. Listen to this hypocrisy. 
Doctors' Union took issue with Section 26, Subsection 5 of the SHIF Act that provides that any person who is registerable as a member in this Act shall produce proof of compliance with the provisions of this Act on registration and contribution as a precondition of accessing public health services from the national government, county government or national and county government entities, saying it will disenfranchise Kenyan citizens from accessing government services. Or suspend the shift. But what about the digital ID? Will that disenfranchise their words? Will that marginalize and cut off Kenyans? Of course, from society. Watch this. It's right here. Listen to this. The digital ID will also be critical for access to government services that are being moved online. We have increased the number of services available on the digital platform from 320 to 5,000 and intend to cover all services that government of Kenya provides. And I think we have identified close to 7,000 services. All of them should be available on a digital platform by the end of this year. The government says the digital identification system and digitization of government services are key in the development of the digital infrastructure that will propel the country into a fully digital economy. Without it, no access. It's right there. The digital ID, without it, you are going to be closed off from society. Is that clear? They're telling you that, my friends. It is going to exclude individuals and groups from society. Who do they think they can deceive? Kenyans wake up. Ugandans wake up. Ghanaians wake up. Africans wake up, Bahamians wake up, those in Trinidad wake up, it's going all over, Jamaicans wake up, those in Europe wake up. Where are God's people to awaken these people? Give this back to me. These services you can access, what's going to happen when they say we must embed it in your body? Will you take that? What about your children? And... In the long run, transit all that into a unique personal identifier, uh, which we are going to give all new bonds in Kenya, mm. and uh, it becomes the, their ID when they attain the age of majority at 18. Friends, we have come to a time, it's happening even in India, you don't own your bodies. You don't have absolute right over your bodies. The digital ID. Listen to this one more time. We are being surrounded. And the reality, as the financial system gets more controlling and more invasive, it's a little bit like bringing up a corral around us. And CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, and vaccine passports or digital IDs are sort of the last uh, shutting of the gate. The last what? Shutting off the gate, my friends, I want to be very frank with you right now. What are those five keys of survival? How are we going to escape the slavery? How? Conversion. Number two, country living. Number three, having food, water, resources on your property. Number four, being self-supporting independent of the government services. Don't be a government pauper. Number four is also evangelism. Number five, assisting those who are less fortunate and have resources for bartering because very, very soon you won't be able to transact. Put a system in place for communication. It's coming. The times in which we're living in. And this is what we should be doing to awakening the world. Watch this as I bring this to a close. I'm going to slow it down right here. In Kenya, the SDA pastor had an opportunity to educate Kenyans. I want everyone to do a Google search. What is the population number in Kenya? How many people reside in Kenya? This issue we just covered has taken Kenyans 
by storm. Everybody is worried, focused, and concerned. And the government of Kenya actually asked the leaders of the churches and religions in Kenya to publicly support the digital ID. And they did. And one SDA leader also joined the bandwagon, the papal bandwagon to enslave his own people. Why did he do that? Does he not understand end time prophecies in the Bible? Is he not praying and studying and fasting? Why did he do that? And here it is. I'll come back to him. And one leader in Kenya from the church he said, oh, we can accept the ID. Why? Because it is not 666. Release that. Uh, this morning we have been enlightened. We have understand even better. Uh, uh, last time when the Huduma number came, we didn't have an idea. There was misconception of 666 and, and such kind, but we appreciate our leaders in the immigration for calling us, sensitizing us, uh, also about the UPI, the unique personal identi identification for our children. That, a num that number, our children are going to maintain it from the time they are born up to the time they are adults. So we appreciate, we support on behalf of all the church leaders who are here. We ap appreciate and we support the vision. We are going to talk to our congregations. We are going to engage our other pastors in our umbrella bodies so that this great initiative will become a success. Actually, mm. Is the national digital ID the mark of the beast? No, it's not. Is it 666? No, it's not. Who also joined that bandwagon? Here he is now. Release that. The one thing which has come out very clearly, and everyone should embrace this, is uh, your own security. The moment the uh, digital ID has been rolled out and the Maisha card, the issue of impersonification, where your ID is used by another party, will be a gone case. The executive director of that con that conference there in Kenya, he had the up he had the microphone to speak to all Kenyans. He could have simply said, "Since everybody is concerned about this and six six six, this is how God works. He allows the draconian system to be rolled out." And people will begin to ask questions. Mark of the beast, 666, so that as they're thinking about these things, his people, SDA, can now get into position and now speak to these issues. The man, the president, could have simply stated, everybody, come here. Let me give you a brief study from scripture. 666 is connected to buying and selling. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 10. Look at verse 14. It speaks about Solomon. How Solomon was building the sanctuary. The sanctuary is for worship. Yes. And the Bible says Solomon had gold. And when he numbered the gold and tallied the gold, it was 666. 666. We arrive at truth by comparing scripture with scripture. So while the ID is not 666, it is connected to no buy, no sell economy. And later on, it will lead into worship. He had the opportunity because right now, Kenyans all over the world, we're being told without this ID, you won't be able to travel you can buy, you can sell. Look at Revelation 13, verse 16 and verse 17. He had the opportunity. Blood is on his hands. Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel 33 also. If the watchman on the walls of Zion refuses to alert the people, of coming danger. If the people are captured and die in their sins, Jesus says, their blood 
will I require at your hand. Blood is on his hands. Ezekiel 33, verse 1 through verse 11. He's not presently a watchman. He's not supporting Babylon's agenda, enslaving its own people in the, in the government, as well as the members of the SDA Kenya churches. He needs to be defrocked. I said so. He had the opportunity to enlighten the masses. Everybody's talking about 666, the mark of the beast. Look what the, look what the president just said. Without it, you can't buy your sale. It's linked. I smell something fishy. It's right there. It's linked to the mark of the beast, CBDC, the IDs, the monitoring system, the mind of the beast, the mandates of the beast. It's all connected. Let me have the pulpit. Give me the microphone by God's grace. It's time to enlighten the people. I ask you now to share this far and wide so others can be enlightened. In closing, I'll say this. Do you realize nowadays, as these policies are being ruled out and people fear their rights are trampled on the foot, Many are asking, is this the mark of the beast? What are we to tell them? Tell them, while you focus on the mark of the beast, ask them, who is the beast? While you focus on the mark, who is the image? I covered that yesterday and the day before yesterday, November 28th, November 30th. Go watch those videos. If we were in the court and someone died of a gunshot wound, the detectives would love to find the murder weapon. But they also want to find who used the weapon. So people are focusing only on the mark. But it's the mark of the beast. The murder weapon is the mark. The beast, who is the perpetrator? Who is the criminal? Who is the murderer? The mark, but who is the image? If I had a trumpet, don't give me a flute. Don't give me a fiddle. I want a trumpet. The beast, the image, the mark. 666, no buy, no sell. It's linked to worship, Revelation 13, 15. In closing, when am I going to land the plane? In closing, while they focus on the mark of the beast being placed in your forehead, in your hand, ask them, is there something else in Revelation 13 and chapter 14 that must be placed in our forehead? What is that? What is that? Don't just focus on the mark of the beast in the forehead. What about the something else in the forehead? What is that? Those of you who are alive, put that which must be placed in our foreheads in the comment section. Because while they say without the mark of the beast, you can buy, you can sell, you're cut off from society. Let me be clear. Without that particular thing in your forehead, you won't be saved. You cannot travel from earth to heaven. That's your passport. That's your visa. That's your immigration documents to go to heaven. What is that thing that must be placed in our foreheads? I leave it there. Join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. We begin our Sabbath services. God bless, Maranatha, happy Sabbath, and the protest continues.